Okay, ladies, this is our 20th episode today. Like, big milestone. We have made it into 20 episodes. Oh, my. <laughs> wow. I don't, I don't understand how quickly. Like, time just flies. What, what my mom kept saying, it's going to go faster the older you get. It is so true. I cannot believe five months. Are you serious, ladies? <laughs> I know. I, I can remember the day that I found out, you know, we were doing this talk show and I was so excited. And to think that we're 20 shows in and just all the people we've met through the show and all the things that we have learned. I never dreamed I would be making floral ice and ice buckets and, you know, and today learning how to paint as well. Yeah. I know yeah. it's been a wonderful journey. And I mean, Dion was our first guest. And I remember that show. I was so nervous. I had to <laughs> meditate. I had to do. <laughs> yes, I remember. Just, and now I look forward to this Friday morning, hanging with you girls, meeting our guests, having a great time. Yeah. Wow. It's yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, welcome Thank everyone that is joining us. I'm Kara Jamison. I'm one of the co-hosts of the Flowers and Friends talk show. I'm a cut flower grower and educator and also on Bloom TV as well. Anna, how about you? Tell them about yourself. Yes, I'm a floral designer. I love promoting the joy of living with flowers. I have a mini series on Bloom TV that's called The Joy of Living with Flowers. And I also have another episode on the magic of edible flowers. Really what I'm into is having you guys to make flowers a part of your everyday life life not just special occasions but every day bring flowers to the table and we have the lovely Dion with us oh you guys you just like I think about you guys through the week and I think well I wonder what the ladies are doing and I hope they're having a good week and I can't wait to catch up with them on Friday so you've truly become such a huge part of my week um, and, and, and the other experts at Bloom, I, you know, they'll, they'll come on and they'll share with what they're doing and what's upcoming. And I think, well, I wonder how that went. And would that be weird if I messaged them? And then I know it wouldn't be weird, but then I forget. And uh, it's, it's become such a big part of my week. And I'm like you, Kara and, and Anna both, we've learned so much. Mm -hmm. Um, I found myself this week, uh, with my, my son's girlfriend of four years they've been dating mm -hmm. and she said to me if I come over will you show me how to make an ice bucket oh <laughs> I saw your Facebook live on that I loved it <laughs> I was like one it's a girl at my house wanting to learn something oh, yeah. from me because right. those boys don't don't care <laughs> and then I thought too yes I get to go do this again and so I asked Matt to buy the supplies and he bought enough for two more right. so we right. have two and I'm waiting for her to come back and she said let's do a part two where you know she wants to film content and I am just over the moon because yeah. none, none of that would happen if you know Danielle was featured in my magazine you doing a bucket uh -huh. and then of course Christy came on and did it with us and so it's just kind of opened my opened up a whole new world that seems yeah. to kind of be tumbling into different avenues right. um, and so for those of you popping on here Thank you for being here. This is our 20th episode, so we're yeah. celebrating, um, you know me, and I'm uh, every once in a while, <laughs> the dance, like, look at right. it, like, this is what we do. Um, it's time is flying by. We're having a, such a wonderful time together. We mm -hmm. ask for you to pass this video around, share yeah. it with your friends. Um, we've been here every single Friday at 12 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Pacific. Mm -hmm. um, and my name, I'm the third co-host, and I am <laughs> Dion Woods. I am the owner, artist, the Turquoise Iris is my brand, and um, over the last few years, I have uh, become a creative mentor, business coach. I'm leaving on Sunday for my Courage on Canvas Ooh. art retreat, and I get to host in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, so we have several retreats in the fall, and honestly, I just found myself this week prepping for that, thinking about Nina, and thinking... I do acrylic and I'm just diving into watercolor. I've really been intimidated mm -hmm. um, by oil. And so right. I'm really excited to have her on as a guest, ladies. But I have to ask you before we move on, do you notice anything different about me today? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yes. There's okay. no. Ladies. Your eyes? <laughs> your, um, your, your eyes? False eyelashes on? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I thought today's a big day because I put my falsies on for the ladies. 
Oh, I love it. I have no idea how to do that. Yeah, <laughs> so, I, I don't know. So, I'm dying these to are try that. These are simple. So my friend came out with her her own line. And so I have multiple boxes. Um, but they you just put the liner on, ladies, uh-huh. and you, it, it's magnetic. So it oh, just, I've heard, I've heard about okay. those. Yeah, it okay. just sticks to the liquid once the liquid's dry. But I put them on and I thought, I wonder if anybody will say anything. <laughs> oh my God, I'm going to try it next week. Definitely have to, because I've been, I've been thinking about that since we started the show. And my daughter is like, mom, you have to do it. Let me do it for you. And what? I'm like, no, what if it doesn't look good? <laughs> but I'm I've never do done it. it. Like this is, <laughs> I just started doing that occasionally. And when, and I would do them at a workshop or something when I knew I was going to have to take a bunch of pictures, but I've never worn them in my life until very, very recently. Um, uh-huh. It's just one of those things, but I was like, I hello, ladies. I <laughs> How are you? <laughs> oh, that's so much fun. Why don't we keep on dancing and get our intro video on the screen? Let's go. That's the best theme song. I need to find out whoever that producer is and make myself a theme song. (laughs) I know. Kara, what have you been up to today? I mean, what this whole week, what have you been, what have you been doing? So so this whole week, one of the things I'm doing, so since I plant a lot of cut flowers, I've actually been ripping out a lot of my fields that that have been growing during the summer and that are tired and putting new compost down to plant more flowers later on this summer. So that has been a job. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard of ragweed. It's a weed that a lot of people are allergic to. I, it's, it's, it's in full bloom. Well, almost full bloom here in Tennessee. And boy, I've been dealing with yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. What about you, Anna? What what have you been up to this week? <laughs> I've been <laughs> something that has nothing to do with flowers because the heat is awful. <laughs> well, you know, I'm in San Diego, so we're not used to heat. But I've been doing ice therapy. You know, I I've been watching this on Instagram, and I'm like, no. <laughs> Like I'm fun. addicted to it now. I do it like what? It every day, and I love it. And it's what's to oh. love about that? Wait, what you got to love? tell them what is ice therapy. Give them a picture. What are you in? <laughs> okay, so there is this um, big bucket, but it's not a bucket. What's it called? Uh, it's it's like a galvanized trough that like uh-huh. what the animals would drink out of. <laughs> exactly. Don't tell and me it, you're getting in it. Don't tell and me. And the you're water in it. is at two degrees. Uh-uh. No, but the no. and <laughs> and so the best part is that you do some breathing techniques. That's the yeah, magic. I bet you do. Yeah, so you do. do breathing <laughs> techniques. And it puts, I mean, the magic of this is that you go into immediate chalk chalk. Oh, okay. That's how you say chalk, yeah. Uh-huh. And then yeah. with breathing, you take control of the situation okay and after just 30 seconds you no longer feel the cold if you're doing the breathing correctly okay so i've been able to stay there for five minutes perfectly in my sense zone and and here's the magic of it later on the day when one of my kids start to get on my nerves or when something unexpected happens, I just start breathing and immediately I can go into my sun. And this is the magic. I mean, because the ice is so cold. So you're reprogramming yourself as to if I was able to survive the ice, uh-huh. I can survive anything. And so it's pretty uh-huh. magical. And besides, it has so many health benefits. So that's what I've been into. Can I do the same thing in a hot tub? 
<laughs> no. And then I've been taking cold showers. I know, I know. I know, I know. Okay. You've been taking cold showers too. I mean, that's that seems like you just took it up a notch. Like you went really extreme by going that's, into the home, oh, the home showers. Okay. I'm the extreme girl. <laughs> Well, I'm anyway. learning something new today about ice therapy, and I'm also going to learn something else new that I personally don't know anything about today. So we Thanks. are going to welcome Miss Nina Bell of Nina Bell Designs on. She is an artist. Oh, let's say hello to her first. Let's bring her on. Let's get her on here. Hi. 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 Nina. Hi. Nina, your setup is just beautiful there. Thank you. Wow. Well, yeah, we're... Okay. we're thrilled to learn from you today. I'm acrylic artist. So oil has always been incredibly intimidating. Um, I think about, you know, in my mind, I feel like you have to have all these extra tools, these extra ingredients and solvents. And I know that that's probably not the case. Um, but I know you're going to walk us through in just a few minutes, walk mm -hmm. us through like setting up and I mean, you have a blank canvas here. You're going to yes, show us kind of how to started underpainting and talk to us about composition and lighting you all so um in the comments we have posted nina's link and mm -hmm. we'll post that on the screen as well here in a few minutes but i think we have a little video clip that we can run that will kind of give you guys a little bit of idea what you'll see on bloom tv with nina as well something new to me was the flamboyant tree which is a tall wide stretching tree that has bright orange red flowers it's growing all over in the Virgin Islands, and it's the first thing that I wanted to get into my travel journal on this trip. The nice thing about journaling with paint is that the purpose of it isn't to give to somebody or to frame and put on a wall. It's just for you to have personally, so you don't have to worry about creating a masterpiece. You can just be mindful and enjoy the process of painting and getting some color and paint down to paper. The flamboyant trees grow up to 15 feet tall and their branches spread out really wide. So you have this beautiful view from above of these bright orange red spots around you on the island, but also walking under them from below. It's so beautiful to have that canopy of bright red orange right above your head such a pretty place. The reason I use watercolor paints when I travel is because they have the quality of being able to dry and re-wet over and over again. So they're easy to put the pans into a little travel palette and stick in your bag or pocket and go with you wherever you go. I want more, please. <laughs> more, please. So it was so pretty there. It's easy to find like good shots of beautiful spaces to paint. Um, but yeah, that's very, the watercolors are a very different experience than painting with oils. And so it's nice to, um, to just have a chance to do each one. And oils definitely stay here. They don't travel with me. <laughs> <laughs> they stay there. Well, Nina, tell us what you are going to be showing us today. And I just have to say, I've been, I've been watching the comments and there have been several people that have said they are very excited about the show today, that they are excited to learn how to do this. Oh, great. Yeah, I'm going to be painting lilies. I have these, um, this pretty bouquet of lilies over here, and I'll be showing how I begin a painting and how I um, compose my canvas, where I keep everything, and then looking at the shapes and colors and lighting. But before that, I'll show you um, a little bit of my finished work. Yeah. Nina, will, will you also tell everybody kind of where you are, um, kind of your background as far as like sure. what you also what you do? Yeah, I, I live near Richmond, Virginia, and I've been painting for a really long time, ever since I was a kid. And I went to James Madison University for my BFA. And then right now I'm in a librarianship class to be a school librarian. So I brought some books about the things that inspire me. Great. And this one is The Secret Lives of Color. And it's one of my favorite books to flip through when I'm starting a piece because it has these really cool facts about different colors and it's inspirational. Oh, um, wonderful. So The so Secret Lives of Color. The and Secret Lives of Color. Cassie I wanna, I'm definitely going to get that because I love. It's so pretty. And then so this is the page on saffron. 
and it has like the color on the edges and then just really interesting facts. Um, this page talks right. about how expensive saffron is and if you don't know, it grows in a crocus. So it's this mm -hmm. violet flower and then the little stamens in there are what you get the spiced saffron from and that pretty color. I had no idea. Thank and you. I marked that page today because I'm going to pull these, violet, these, uh, pull these over. Oh, great. If you see the little anthers on them. Oh, beautiful. They're that same saffron color. They're so pretty. So I, oh, wow. Uh -huh. I know some people cut them off um, yeah. so that it doesn't get everywhere because it definitely stains. Uh -huh. But I really like them. So I wanted to leave them on and get them in my painting and have that mm -hmm. color. Really beautiful. Okay. So show it, So you have some more books. So this is another book that I, I like the language of flowers, the history of the Victorian meanings and symbolism. And it's something I, I really think about when I'm painting flowers. Um, even if it's not in the title or nobody else knows, I just like to personally know the meaning of the flowers that I'm putting into it. Mm -hmm. So that book has a lot of great information. Mm -hmm. So what is the painting you're doing um, inspired on the... Okay, yes. The flowers. This is a painting that I'm working on now. And it's it has peonies, which mean hardiness. And the reason I'm I'm doing the um, all of the meanings of these flowers is because it's it's gonna be hanging in a social services building in the visitation room. So oh. families will be reuniting there. Maybe um, kids would be sleeping there overnight if needed in an emergency. So this painting is supposed to have a lot of meaning. Oh, and hopefully, yeah. So the peonies are for hardiness. Um, the white lilacs uh -huh. mean youth. And then oh. this is, um, this one's kind of unfinished, but it's a hawthorn branch. Okay. And the hawthorn branches mean hope. Oh, oh, really? Honey, that's just so beautiful. I know you said you're not done with it, but it does already just look extraordinary to us. The, all of you. us watching, Thank honey, you. that's yeah. beautiful. I definitely work slowly and I build up layer by layer. And so mm -hmm. it takes a while, but I think that you can really see that the finished piece. I'll show, I have Please. a painting, it's not of flowers, but this one's of my dog. Oh, hi buddy. Oh, and when I do my underpainting, I, I use colors that are a little bit unexpected mm -hmm. and my finished piece is much more toned down, but you can still see some of the underneath. Um, there's a little bit of blues, especially on the side oh, here, turquoise oh, coming through. Oh, and I think it gives it a lot more interest. So when I do my underpainting, I make sure I use some bright bold colors that I might cover most of it up but it still peeks out. Oh I love that you do it unexpected and that you do your own thing. I mm -hmm. really love that. <laughs> Let me show this is one other one I'll show you before I start painting. This is a oh. painting a still life I did and it has um, one of my favorite books a Van Gogh book. I have a page open to it and then this is my little journal like the travel journal that I have yeah. in that video um, and it's of a hydrangea and I have the little meanings Aww. and then the hydrangea flowers in a window. Um, and I just really like to keep working on something over and over and changing things. I think it's, it's something that I had to learn in class when I was taking oil painting classes. One of our teachers had us um, paint the room every day. We'd come in and set up our canvas and paint what we saw, the students, the room, and then the next class. Wow we had to paint on top of it to change, you know, people changed clothes, changed spots. And we worked on it over and over for weeks and just had to keep painting over stuff we had already painted. And I think that- Was that hard? It was, it was really hard at first. Yeah. Really That's hard. Definitely a letting go technique. Yeah, especially <laughs> if you had, you know, it's hard to paint a likeness of someone. So if you felt you had it and then they moved, you had to start Absolutely. over. It's, but it was, it was really good for me because Sometimes you need to change something and you don't want to change it because you have it there and you've worked on it hard. Uh -huh. And it's good to be able to cover it up and fix it if it needs fixing. Oh, I agree. Nina, we do something very similar to that at my retreats. I have the ladies come up and then paint over each other's work. Oh, well, that's hard to do. That's hard. Like, oh I'm my like, gosh. Here, Kate. And I'm like, you come on up here now because it's a lesson of not getting too attached to something and yeah, exactly. and, and really building up your layers and, and waiting for the for the ending. So it is yeah. it's a great you also lesson. Have to be, I, I have to teach you to be bold because you have to you have to cover up someone else's work. <laughs> that mm -hmm. takes some confidence. Well, and it also takes trust. You have to be yeah. able to trust each other. And so you have to come up going, okay, you know, I love you. This is not personal. I'm going <laughs> to, 
I'm going to paint over this section. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's building trust as well in a community. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Good exercise. Love that. So to get started, I'm going to show you what I'll be mixing up. Great. And I don't use any black when I start. I do all my shadows with violet or ultramarine um, or some burnt umber. Okay. And I think that that helps because it shows like the other colors when you're building up, you see these brighter colors showing through instead of black and white. Yeah. Um, I love that you said this. your violet. I love you said your shadows are with your violet. So do you mix a little black into it or you mix a little gray? I'll mix, I'll mix some of the burnt umber into it sometimes. Awesome. Or if I want to tone it down, I'll, I'll do some yellow since that's the opposite on the color wheel. It'll tone it down and make it a little muddier. Oh yeah. I'm trying so to get fun. this the right angle so you can see. But when I mix my greens, I usually mix the ultramarine blue and some cadmium yellow. And that's the bright green color that I'll use for the middles, like the middle shade. And sometimes mm -hmm. I'll tone that down with a little bit of red because red and green are opposites on the color wheel. Mm -hmm. And that kind and so of it's a little, yeah, shape. a little earthier, yeah, more like a real plant and not so bright. And I'll use that in all of the, when I'm blocking in. So for my underpainting, I'll do a lot of blocking in on the leaves with that tone. And then I'll do my highlights with the cadmium yellow and white. And then for the actual flowers, the lilies over here, I'll use straight um, red, this cadmium red, and some white. Okay. Okay. And I'm not toning that down too much. Are you able to see the color? It has some yeah. green already mixing in for my palette knife, but I leave it really bright again so that it shows through because my top layers I'll be muting and toning down, making them earthy, but the little peaks of bright pink will be a lot more interesting. Yeah, it'll be a really great mix the way that you do that. So most of your colors you're toning down and doing mm -hmm. a more subtle version, but with the with the red and the pink, you want to keep that pretty bold. Of course, it's lily, so you yeah. you want those to really just pop out at you, right? Yes, and and then they'll be kind of the focal point. They'll be they'll be brighter. I don't like everything. I like it to balance, so it gives it some balance to have some yeah. bright bold colors and then some muted, and then the shadows. Like I had said, I'll do some burnt umber with the violet um, for some of the shadows. Oh, honey. So when you start mixing up your palette for oil paint, how long does your oil paint stay fresh and wet it'll, and workable? It'll stay, um, if you leave it out, it's going to start getting a film over it as the top layer dries. But if you put it into something airtight, it'll last for a really long time, especially these big chunky areas. They're going to last for, for a few weeks. Okay. That's so great. Right. So and with then, the under... Underpainting, you you use un untraditional colors for underpainting. Is that what you? Yes, and I it's hard um, it's hard sometimes to not just go for what you see. So I'll mix it up, and if I notice that I'm starting to be a little bit too realistic with it, I'll throw in some bolder colors so that my underpainting has some Got some it. brightness to it. And I also use um, I use my solvent to water down these paints when I'm painting my underpainting because it thins it down and it dries faster. And I don't like to have um, a lot of impasto thick areas on the underpainting because I want that to be my top layers where I'm building it up more. So I want it to be really thin down, watery. Okay. And just an easier sketchy kind of look. Okay. But then after that, I'll get rid of my solvent. I'll put that away because it smells and it's just a chemical to have around. And I'll use solvent-free method methods for the rest okay. of the layers. So I'll get started. Okay, great. First, I'll show you how I set up my still life. Okay. So when I'm painting from nature, I'll usually have natural light. And today I have a light since I don't have a window right here. Okay. And I just angle that so that the shadows look interesting and the highlighted areas look interesting. And with these lilies, like I said, I like that saffron. So I'm making sure that some of that has a bright highlight from the light hitting it. Oh, that's a good, that's a good thing to know about lighting. Very fascinating to me. It's easier to see the shapes too. So you're looking, if you look at it as a flower, you'll probably start painting like what your brain thinks a flower should look like. But if you break it down in your mind into like all the little shapes and angles, it'll look a lot more realistic on your canvas because your brain's not, you know, telling you what it should look like. You're actually looking at what's there. 
And I use a really wide brush to start. And I'm just going to get started on the shadows first and block in with that violet color. So Nina, as you are starting the painting, uh, Rachel has asked, can the extenders and solvents be named? Um, there are so many with oil. Um, they are a bit intimidated by the process. So the ones that I use, I use Gamsol for my solvent. It's supposed to be odorless. Okay. It's definitely a lot better than just using a straight paint thinner. And when I'm using, when I'm not using solvents, I use the Gamblin solvent free gel as my thickener. Mm. And then to thin down the paints, I use the solvent free fluid from Gamblin. From Gamblin? That's also from Gamblin, yes. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for that. Thank you for sharing that information. That Rachel will appreciate that too. And so will everybody else. I wrote it down too. Okay. So this custom color that you're doing for the underpainting. So this is just, it's mostly burnt umber and it's okay. really watered down. So it's going to be drippy and messier, but I just, when I'm doing this, I work a little bit fast on my underpainting because especially if you're going with natural light, things mm -hmm. will start to change. So I just like to block in my basic idea. And I also take pictures with my phone of what I'm working on from the exact angle I'm looking at it so that I can go back and see. Genius. Genius. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is the big shadow. That's like the first thing I kind of see other than the flowers when I look at this over here. I see that shadow of the light hitting the um, base and then okay. making that on the table. And then it, it continues onto the wall. And that's the next, other than the focus point, that's another really interesting area of the painting because that shadow makes that shape on the wall. So I'm just blocking in okay. with the burnt umber and some violet. I just want to let you know that I'm not a painter. I have a really hard time painting, but I'm loving listening to you. It's so soothing <laughs> and relaxing. And I'm like, oh my God, I love it. It is fun. It's fun to watch people do something that they like to do and listen. Uh -huh. It is. And I think it's yeah. because we're all habitual, like we are all compulsive or a bit habitual about learning things. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I say those words as pretty dramatic because we're all just mesmerized. Um, and so if we get quiet, it's because we're, we are thoroughly enjoying what you're doing. <laughs> yes, totally. And I'm, I'm definitely exaggerating what I'm looking at here because it'll help me later. But then when I go in, in the later layers, I'll be blending in. If you look at the actual lilies in the shadow, it's really subtle and it blends from dark to light. And then I have a hard shadow here. Um, it just helps me to know what I'm painting later on, but I'll go in and be blending the upper layers and it'll be a lot more subtle. Okay. And the intention of the underpainting is to um, not just cover up the white, but just to kind of frame out where you're going to be, uh, or how do you describe why? Yeah, I, um, I know some people use it to really bring out all the values and tones of where the shadows and highlights will be. And I kind of do that, but I'm also doing it to um, look at if I like the composition, if I want to change something before I get started on all the detail and uh, to add something different. That's why I do the brighter colors because it's just like an extra little thing that um, it's not planned and not not technical, I guess. It's okay. just something that can happen. Sure. So. Sure. I love that. So as, as me, as someone, I don't know much about painting. I would have tried to paint the flowers first. So yeah. So it's, it's another way to kind of trick your brain to start with something that you wouldn't or something that you don't, like you don't know what the shadow of it's going to uh -huh. look like without mm. looking right at it. So it makes okay. you makes you paint what you're looking at, I guess. Okay, so this is like the background and then you're gonna put so, the yes. top of it, so right? This is, okay. this is that shadow there. And now I'm going to use a smaller brush. Oh, I see, it's the shadow, okay, gotcha. Yes, this is the shadow, I know. Okay. You're probably like, what is happening in this painting? It's just purple mess. Okay. And I then when it. I go in for my flowers, I'm gonna kind of sketch the whole outline with this pink of the whole area as okay. a whole, and then okay. go in and do individual. So when I'm looking at it, it's it's overhanging 
this way mm -hmm. and my waist is going to be right here. So you can kind of see where I'm at. Ah, okay, yeah. And this, this is the um, edge of the table here. So you can see that better. And yeah, I'm no, looking beautiful. at my screen because I can't see around here as quite yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, Gives such a more realistic look the way you're doing your shadow with your underpainting too. Yeah. It, so these, just... are, these are like the snapdragons that are sticking out the top. Okay. And this is just the lily hanging over here. So you are just outlining all of the flowers. This is, yes, this is just the main outline. And it, it helps you to have somewhere to start. You know kind of where you're headed uh -huh. before you do any detail. Nina, yeah. why did now you fall in have... love with flowers? Why flowers, Nina? How did I fall in love with flowers? Yes, yes. Like, so when did that love I, begin? I love gardening and growing flowers. And so that was part of it. But I also read a book called the language of flowers, not the history book I showed, but a novel. And it's about a girl who grew up in foster care. And she never, she never had a family. She grew up all through foster care um, and then aged out. And at 18, she started, um, she found out about the Victorian language of flowers and she started um, communicating and like connecting with people through these bouquets that had a meaning to them. Mm -hmm. And I just, I loved the whole idea of that. And mm -hmm. I got really into the meanings of flowers and communicating through flowers. So that was definitely a big influence. And that one's by um, Vanessa Diffenbaugh. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yes. It is. So this is the, the one big lily on the side there, the five petals, just blocking it in with a medium pink. Okay. And then I'll go back in with some shadows and details. Oh. And I'm so, still thinning it down. If I wanted to paint with oils, do you recommend a first like set of oils? Like, are there levels, or are they all the same? Um, there's there's a lot of different levels. You can go from okay. really cheap to really expensive. Okay. And if you go into a craft store, I think that they have it set up usually where like the lower end all the way to the high end. Okay. Um, and I like the Gamblin colors a lot, and I uh -huh. think that they have a lower end line that's a little bit cheaper for getting started. Okay. Do you think that a good place to start for somebody would be 12 colors? Because you, you mix so many of your own. Do you think 12 colors, like a basic set, is a good place to yeah, start? Yeah, I think you could even go lower um, lower than 12. There's probably sets of six out there that you could mix a, a lot of stuff with. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. How do you name your paintings, Nina? That's, that's one of the hardest things for me. Naming and pricing are the hardest two things. And I don't know. I don't even know where it comes from. I look at the meaning. I look at the colors. Um, I think about where I painted it at. And I just me try too. to. Yeah. So you said pricing. So where can people find your paintings if they wanted to purchase them? I have some at a few galleries around Richmond. Um, one is Crossroads. Okay. And I also have a website, ninabelldesigns.com, where I have okay. my paintings for sale. All right. Before I get too far on the flowers, um, I'm going to do a shadow, actually. But before I get too far, I'll go ahead and show a couple leaves so you can see that green color. Because I don't know how long I have and how far I'll get on this before. Everyone's <laughs> loving everything. <laughs> Everyone's like... Oh, this is so soothing. This is so <laughs> wonderful. This is so positive and enlightening. Oh, my God. <laughs> People are loving seeing you paint. And listen. It's hard. It's a lot harder to do it from the side here instead of standing directly in front of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so when I do a leaf, this is that ultramarine and yellow. A really mm -hmm. medium color. I love that shade of green you're making. That's I love that emerald green like that. Um, someone is asking, how long do the paint stay open once applied to your canvas, Nina? Um, before they start drying? Yeah. This layer will dry in a few days because it has so much solvent. It's so thin. Thicker layers, um, like the thick, thick layers like Van Gogh, the impasto, those could take a really long time to dry. I think that he kept his under his bed, drying for a year. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. I'm when I do the shadows, <laughs> I'm just kind of looking at where 
the light hits it's and it's dry to the touch before that but to completely cure it takes a long yeah, time yeah right um i'm just looking at the shadows i'm putting them in with the ultramarine blue just completely straight blue okay and then i'll go back into that leaf with yellow as so a highlighter. highlighter and it'll yeah. mix it'll pull up and turn kind of green but I'd love to know how long it usually takes for you to start a painting and say, okay, this is done. Mm -hmm. It's That's another hard thing is figuring out when you're finished and stopping before you go too far on a painting. But mm -hmm. I keep my canvases on this easel. And after about a month is when I start getting ready to move on to something new. And so I'll, I'll try my hardest to have it done within the month so that I have something new on my canvas on my easel to work on so usually about a month wow and, yeah. and being a full i mean being a mom of three ha going to school and all that do you have like a specific time when you paint are there any dates or how do you go about it i usually um leave it up on my easel so that whenever i'm walking by the room i'll i'll see it and work on it when i have a minute Um, and it's always different. It's just, it's hard. It's really hard to schedule it in. So it's when mm -hmm. I have some free time and it's nice to have it. I'm in the downstairs of my house right by my front door and there's glass doors to this studio. So uh -huh. I'll see it and I'll see something that I want to change. And if I have a minute, I can stop and paint for a little while. That's another good thing about oils is they take so long to dry that there's plenty of time to still go back and blend layers and not worry about getting it all done at once. Wow. I think But, you have to be more disciplined. Um, mm -hmm. I think you're, you're, you're clearly more disciplined than myself as well. Um, because I just think about, I like acrylics because they dry fast. And yeah. the reason is Nina, I, I like to move on to the next project quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, I like to start, go be done and start a new one. And so yeah. when you That's say, true. say I see that, Yeah, it, it's, um, I think if I had a month before a painting was finished, I'm worried that, it, I don't know if it's just um, not naive or inexperienced, but I'm worried that I would be bored with it or I wouldn't want to finish it. I think it can happen and I'll, I'll sometimes get bored with something. I have some down here that are unfinished that I got bored with and just tucked away but I could always pull them out and finish them if I feel like inspired yeah. to finish those ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's always fine to just move on. If it's not working or you want to switch it, you don't have, you're not committed to finishing it on your easel. Mm -hmm. You can just yeah. put it away for a while. Dion. Yes, ma'am. You know I love challenges, so I'm going to have to challenge you on this one. <laughs> yes, I think it's a great therapy. <laughs> <I'm looking> <laughs> Not for all your paintings, <laughs> but imagine there are things in life that actually take large amounts of time to complete yeah. or to come. So this is a great way to experience that not everything happens fast. Some things take time and That's life. <laughs> well, it's, it's probably hard for you watching, like watching something like this. That's it's gonna, it's not gonna be done at all by the time I'm done uh -huh. today. You I know, know. I'm a really today. fast painter, and da, 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 and flipping, and and you know, just um, I'm definitely more abstract as well. So I'm loving what you're doing. This is not hard for me to watch you at mm -hmm. all. Trust me, uh -huh. this is not hard. I'm I'm loving this. I want to take your class. I want to come over. I want to hang out with you. Trust me. But I am, I'm not as disciplined, I believe, as you because I, and I do want to go faster and I do put up paintings, Nina, and bring them back out a couple of months later. May I, if I did get bored, yeah. I'm like, you know what? Now I know what you need and I will yeah. rework that. Right. But, um, the acrylic. It's kind of like a more intense version of that. If you have it up and you're staring at it every day. And it goes by like a whole month. By the end of the month, you'll have a different idea on it than you did at you the will. beginning. You will. You'll have more life experiences. You have things that happen throughout the life. You have seasons that are changing. You have a, a rainy season or a hot season or, you know, you have a vacation possibly. And I did that once. This hutch was right here behind me, ladies. I I had a, a – these colors are called blue iris that I was allowed to name myself and water lily. And I went – 
I had a plan. Like I had a whole plan how this makeover was going to go. Mm -hmm. And I found myself stuck in a creative block with my mm. brand new colors and just felt really, really frustrated. Mm -hmm. And it, it was time for me to go to my, my Paris trip with my friends. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that when I came home, I would be so completely inspired. And I knew exactly, as soon as I walked in the door, I set my bags down and I looked at it and I'm like, I know what's coming for you, girl. I know what's <laughs> coming. I got it all. I had it all figured out, but I took that experience and seeing Paris and, and I ended up naming her after Paris because oh, that's lovely. it was just one of those things where a whole eight days had gone by and everything here had changed, right? For my experiences and my travels. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's lovely. Kind of like your, your watercolor that you did in the journal. I imagine that you bring home those little pieces oh, yeah. mm -hmm. in your journal. And I think that's what's what the journal really helps with is connecting that, mm -hmm. connecting it visually to your memories and it'll stick in your head and you'll probably pull it out like times you don't even know that you're doing it subconsciously. It'll Absolutely. End up in your head. Absolutely. And tell me what you're doing now. Explain this process here. So this is, I'm going kind of around the shadow into the, the medium tone of the wall and of the, um, the desk here mm -hmm. and just doing the same thing. I'm letting everything kind of mix together at this point mm -hmm. on my brush. I just know that I want light colors, so I'm not washing out my brush, but I'm picking up some of the highlight tones, the white and the yellow, and letting it blend into everything I have. So it's, it's muddy. Um, it's not the highlight. It's just kind of going into the background, so I'm not okay. trying to bring it out. But that way you can oh, see a little yeah. bit more of a finished area here and you can see yeah. that I I didn't do anything it's all kind of sketchy it's nothing um, that's really set or detailed yet but I'm blocking in where I see shadows and mm -hmm. where I see highlights I'm loving it Nina it's so amazing and I have a huge favor to ask you on behalf of our audience and the three of us because we're not gonna see the finished painting so mm -hmm. you can every three days or every week send us a picture of how it's coming because yeah. we really want to see how it how the definitely. whole process and how it ends i will yeah i'll post i'll post the process of it and this will probably this will probably be done the underpainting of it will be done today but the oh, wow. main thing yeah it'll be a while so I'll, i can do a process update. So will you also tell us a little bit about um, our subscribers for Bloom TV? Um, I didn't catch how many videos you have on there, but what will viewers be able to see on your, even your upcoming videos that you plan on having on Bloom TV? Okay, sure. I have, there's um, one video on there that's oil painting and okay. it's in two steps. It's a quick little oil painting in just two layers of hydrangeas. Okay. if you want to try out the oil painting and that's a simple way with just a few colors and okay. then i have some watercolors the travel journal that you saw the clip of yes and i also have um, a couple of watercolor how to on how to paint flowers mm. and so i think it's maybe four or five that are up there now that's beautiful so everybody that's listening um you can go to Bloom TV Network, and if you're new here, I know we, we often have a lot of new viewers pop in, um, but you can go to bloomtvnetwork.com, and you can subscribe, and I believe we have a coupon code for, you can get a free month. Your first month can be free. Mm -hmm. So if you go there, you can use that code FLOWERS. Mm -hmm. and get your first month free and it will suck you in and you will fall <laughs> in love. We have over a hundred, uh, well over a hundred experts and we are growing with our artists as well. Um, but you can see videos from uh, Anna and Kara and myself and Nina and all of our other guests here. Uh, there, It just goes on and on and on. So it's a great getaway. It's a great weekend of inspiration. Um, but anyway, I wanted to make sure we threw that out there and mention everybody that you have additional videos on Bloom TV. And it's really incredible that you can watch the videos from wherever you are. I mean, you can be on vacation, you can be at home, you can be waiting for your kids to get off from school. So you can use it on your cell phone, iPad, 
computer, wherever and whenever you feel like you want to see a video. Yeah, and there is definitely a flower category for everyone on there. And you may even find yourself mm -hmm. diving into a category that you didn't even know that you wanted to learn something about. Uh, like we have a lot of uh, edible flower experts on there and that are cooking and creating mm -hmm. things with flowers. Oh, um, yeah. We have medicinal flower experts on there. Um, we had um, some ladies on the show one time that showed us how to make a foot soak with dried flowers, which I thought was so fun. Um, cool. Of course, we have the whole um, genre of gardening and flower farming if you want to learn how to grow flowers. We have lots of floral design videos on there and then artistic videos as well. I mean, there is really just, it's so much fun, so much content to dive into. So make sure you yeah. guys use that free month coupon. I think you'll love it. And Absolutely. We, we have a really incredible video that we just got in the system, the What Women Create with Holly. And I believe we have a short clip about it. Yeah. Why don't we do it? Yeah, let's play that. I don't always have an expectation for my harvest when I go out there. I sort of let what's available dictate what I make. And when I'm outside, I don't overthink it at all. I don't even, I, I'm told. I listen to the wind, the wind tells me. I listen to the garden, it tells me what to pick. That's part of the art of the whole thing is that you have no idea. You don't know what the garden is going to give you that day. Once I come in with everything is really when kind of the creative juices get flowing and I decide what, what's going to happen. Oh my goodness, you guys, if you want to watch that entire video, you can do that also on Bloom TV. You do not actually have to be a subscriber. It's there for you, free to watch. And Holly is a, what's the word? I mean, she's just, she's, it's powerhouse. Like, powerhouse. Powerhouse. <laughs> powerhouse. <laughs> powerhouse. That yeah. is absolutely true. She shows us how to dry flowers and all of the different things that she does. Her Instagram is like a candy store of, of <laughs> visuals. So make sure you're checking out Holly as well. But we also have a clip from our girl Anna right here. Um, it's been a, it's been a really good month for Bloom TV. Um, and we want to show that a little clip of that as well, because this is another little video clip you can see on Bloom. Oh, we don't have it anymore. <laughs> We don't have that clip to show it to you guys, but I made a video on the magic of edible flowers and it's free on Bloom TV uh, and it ha it's in Spanish, but it has subtitles in English mm -hmm. and Dion here can tell you that it's easy to go through. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't understand yes. a word. Yeah, it's absolutely easy. I, I loved watching every single bit of it. And, and even though with the subtitles, I found myself not even really reading them because I was so enthralled mm -hmm. by what I was seeing on the screen. So mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful videos. I, this week I was prepping for Nina's and I was kind of scrolling through her Instagram and I saw a lot of hydrangea, which is something that I still have blooming. And even though I went and kind of foraged, you know how I, you guys know how I do. I just yeah. grab stuff. Like I, I grabbed it. some ivy and I grabbed some potato vine. Do you guys have potato vine growing like crazy where um, you guys live? No, you know what we have growing crazy that's a vine is passion flower vine. <laughs> okay, well I don't have that, but potato vine, it grows and you can't kill it. I mean it just uh -huh. it's impossible. So I always like that, but I just I started putting that together and it reminded me of a little video that I had. Um, where I wanted to kind of create a studio day, an art day. And so I put together a little video and then I yeah. clipped it down for us today. If we don't mind playing just a little short video Yay. of me yeah. foraging. I wanted to take advantage of all of the green lushness around our house. This ivy grows like crazy in the summertime, but like with any other ivy, it's going to die off very soon as the cooler temps start to set in in the evening and night. So I am collecting some of this, and this is just crepe myrtles, my hydrangea, and I wanted to put together an arrangement so I could use it for inspiration in my studio. 
Hydrangeas, I think, are pretty easy to paint. I feel like it's just an easy cluster of color, uh, and you can't really go wrong with that. So I'm just kind of grabbing some things and hanging on to the last few days of summer. And I'm using my blue and white china. I love the blue and white. I have a antique hutch over off of the camera to the side here where I store all of that in my wedding china, which we never use at all. <laughs> and the fact that my dress matched, well, that was just random. I promise that wasn't planned at all. Uh, but I'm grabbing some of my Japanese maple and using that for the contrast. I think that'll be really pretty in a painting as well. As the summer goes on, typically my hydrangea fades out a little bit. It gets pretty warm, but it always perks back up in the fall. By September, it starts to perk back up and the color gets intense again, which I love, love the shade of these hydrangea. So without a plan, I'm just kind of cramming all of that in there, as many blooms as possible. And I love how it turned out. That was so beautiful. I was like, oh. Oh, well. I just think it makes me sad that all of that's going to kind of die off, you know, really, really quickly. So either way, I'm, you know, Nina, you're completely and totally inspiring. And I, I love that you pull flowers and set them up and, and still lifes. Again, still life is another thing that's intimidating to me. Um, so this has just been an absolute joy to have you on here Thank and you. show us how to work through this. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun to try like explaining how I do stuff that I haven't really put a lot of thought into in a while. So yeah. you're a delight to listen and watch. And thank you so much. And everyone here in the comments, it's yes. like, yes, we want to see the process. We want to <laughs> see how it turns out. So you need to it turns out. Pictures, please, or tag us. Thank yes. you. Thank you so, thank so much, so much, Nina. <laughs> We have a winner from last week. So for those of you that have been um, submitting and um, putting in your email address every single week, we are giving away, or I'm not, but Bloom is giving away an annual subscription to Bloom yeah. TV, mm -hmm. okay? And that you can, you can um, submit to that as well by going to Bloom TV, going up, make sure I say the right thing. You click on Flowers and Friends. Mm-hmm. And click here for our weekly giveaway. And not only are you going to get an annual subscription to Bloom, I'm going to send you some free paint, uh, which I, I love to do. And every single week we do that. And this week's winner is my girl. Oh, Marlene Walker. My, my Marlis, it's so bad because Marlis's name is no longer Marlis Walker. She's my Marlis. And so oh. <laughs> I, Marlis is, is fam, like family to me. And so Marlis, my girl, I'm going to send you a text because I don't know if you're going to see this today or not, but um, you won my Marlis. You, you all, she is like, she's one of the biggest supporters of the turquoise iris. She just, she helps me with retreats and she's just, she's a beautiful person. And oh, I couldn't think of anybody. I know. I'm just, it's so great to see the support and the generosity of Bloom TV. Before we go, I want to say something from the comments. Everyone loved your dress, Dion. Everyone's like in English and in Spanish. Su vestido, her dress. Yes. That was Thank you. It was lemons and I... I had not really worn the dress before. So thank you. That was, that was fun. Um, you know me, I like my floral dresses and my lemon dresses and all that kind of stuff. But also Kara, we have something we need to do for sure before we go today. Right. Say goodbye. What? <laughs> we to our sponsors. Oh, I'm like, what? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, just jumping, right? Like jumping. I'm sorry. I should have given more information than that. We, we are live, everyone. We are live. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, we want to thank our sponsors so much for sponsoring Bloom TV and our show today. Let's play a little video clip and we'll be right back to say goodbye. Thank you. We have built the world's first flower-focused streaming network, bringing the public educational and entertaining shows that highlight the magic of flowers. 
Learn how to heal through flowers, cook with flowers, design your living space to reflect nature, make crafts using florals, sustainably garden, and so much more. We are your network for all things floral. Join us at Bloom TV as we help bring beauty to the lives of people and the planet through nature's most beautiful creation, the flower. Who do we who do we have next week coming on? You guys tease everybody a little bit because I won't be here, but you guys have some pretty impressive powerhouses coming on. Yes, we have someone coming on to talk about sunflowers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, we may dive into floral design as well. <laughs> yeah, awesome. It's going to be an incredible show. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this week. Remember, we are here every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific time, noon mountain time, and 1 p.m. East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> it's five o'clock somewhere. We're all exactly. somewhere. <laughs> yes, but make sure if you guys can't ever make our show live, remember that you can always watch our shows for free on bloomtvnetwork.com. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a great one. And Nina is going to probably come back for another show. I see you guys asking yes. when she's going to be back on. Yeah. Um, we will have her back on again sometime, maybe when it gets a little more into fall um, mm -hmm. and she can kind of instruct us through something like that. But guys, go tune in right now and subscribe. You can watch her video. She said four or five right now today. Enjoy the weekend. And ladies, thank you so much for, for spending your Fridays with me. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Everybody else, uh, Kara, tell us why this show is the number one rated show all in the land. <laughs> Right, because everything is better with flowers and friends. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Bye. See you next week. Bye.